Hi, I'm Fred, and today I want to talk about Persona 4 Golden. Uh, so if you're first, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you are a returning viewer, uh, welcome back. Uh, now, full disclaimer, uh, for those who pay attention to the shirts that I wear and want to line it up with the, uh, with, the, uh, with the archive streams here on YouTube channel, I am recording this a bit after midnight on June 23rd, 2024. I finished my playthrough of Persona 4 Golden a little over an hour ago. Uh, so I've had uh, about, a, you know, about uh, 70 minutes to decompress um, and do all my normal post stream shenanigans uh, and, and, su and such and, and to collect my overall thoughts on this particular game. Um, now I never played the PlayStation 2 version of, uh, of Persona 4. I, I never played that one. I have a sealed copy of it as well as Persona 3, uh, Fest, uh, which both of which will remain permanently sealed thanks to, you know, again, Persona 4 Golden being available on modern consoles. And of course, Persona 3 Fest essentially has just gotten a, a re- uh, a remake essentially with Persona 3 Reload, which I will eventually play. Uh, even though I just played Persona 3 Portable last year, so it's that's not really a high priority for me at the moment. Um, anyway, uh, Persona 4 Golden. Um, I, I really enjoyed my experience with uh, this particular game. Um, and I find it to be a nice... Happy uh, bridge, for lack of a better term, between what I saw with Persona 3 Portable and what le will later become uh, Persona 5, Persona 5 Royale. Um, so there were a lot of things that were in uh, P3P that was here in uh, P uh, P4G. The shuffle time, for example, which became more like, okay, which cards do you select? And it became a game, uh, a mini game of like, okay, how many of these items could I end up getting at any given time? Um, but uh, so there is that the, the the dungeon, the dungeons of Persona 4 Golden are kind of like uh, kind of like a weird hybrid, because there there is a lot of that remnants of what the Tartarus uh, floors were like. In terms of going up to the individual floors, they sort they look very much the same, but as you got higher and higher in Tartarus, the themes change, and there were there were subtle differences. Uh, Persona 4 Go Golden's uh, Dungeons, the TV world, is like it changed, obviously, depending on which uh, uh, TV channel, <laughs> for, for lack of better, uh, or which show for... Uh, that you were going into from uh, Risei's uh, show being like the, uh, oh, almost like a, a reality dating sim or Kanji's being an investigative uh, report on like uh, steam rooms uh, uh, and, and so forth uh, <laughs> and, and uh, stuff like that or or the asinine gimmicks that were of the Hollow Forest, which was essentially to discourage the player from pursuing Marie. So, like, there was, the dungeons in P4G were certainly more customized to the individual personalities of the uh, of the bosses of those particular dungeons. And obviously that will later evolve into what you see with the full-blown palaces in Persona uh, uh, 5 Royale. So it's like seeing that evolution of it. It, 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 it's really neat. So, th so, so you you could really imagine if Persona 4 Golden was to be remade. And let me say this right now: it's not it doesn't need to be remade. Remastered, absolutely. But uh, but to be a, a full blown remake is not needed. But if there was going to be a remake of it, really, all they would really need to do. Is this go this go total ham with the with the TV world dungeons? That's about it, because you can keep everything else the same from the story pacing and everything else, all the individual social links, all the individual activities, all the all the side quests. It's like nothing else needs to really be touched or changed if you want to bring it up and like re-release this game in a modern for modern audiences. 
But again, it's it's not really needed because the only thing that would need to be justified change is it's like this to go nuts with the uh, with the TV World dungeons. That, that's essentially it. Um, staying on the dungeons a bit more. Uh, one thing I eventually noticed is that is that there really wasn't much of a pattern difference from floor to floor. It's like certain, uh, it's like, um, when you went like backtrack from floor to floor or revisited the dungeon and went time to do like side quests, trying to find items and stuff like that, the pad, the floor pattern stayed essentially the same. So, which kind of lost a little bit of what I liked about Tartarus and that the floors constantly changed. Like some floors were, way bigger than others at, at times some were some were smaller floors some were much larger so uh, there was that so so again then again that, that kind of leads into what i was just saying it's like the tv dungeons make them more like uh the persona 5 dungeons is it's going totally totally ham with them again persona 5 palaces i slip of the tongue there or at uh, because that's the only way you can really improve it here to really add more personality and stuff to it. Um, talking about the social links and all the side characters here. Um, there's not a bad character in this game at all. Uh, while Persona 3 and Persona 5 both have characters I didn't particularly care for. Like, I am in the camp of being that Goro Kechi is absolutely horrible as a character. That, all right. So that that is my personal opinion there, and I am someone who also does not particularly care for, uh, uh, uh Kanamata or um, uh, like uh, uh, what the heck was his name? Do with the beanie and the overcoat, the uh, the Edge Lord in Persona Three. Uh, who was like who was like, who was like uh. And he goes a uh, bro uh, of sorts. Like I, I, I didn't care for them. So like they were, uh, in Persona Four Golden, it's like I genuinely like every individual character uh, for, that you encounter throughout the entire course of the game. I mean, obviously Nanako steers the show in her own right, uh, where he's like, okay, oh, you're messing with Nanako. Okay, it's time for you to get your ass kicked. But at the same time i you um i really liked uh kanji and and and, uh kanji without question is my favorite character of 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 the persona of the persona games i played which are all basically three four five uh and and several of the spinoffs uh kanji has evolved from uh, into my like my favorite overall character he's like the best bro character uh in in the entire uh, in the like the modern uh, games, uh, in, in my opinion, uh, it's like Naoto is a great character. Chie is, is incredible with her story arc, and with uh, Teddy, despite knowing what Teddy was all about, seeing him early on and evolving into what he would eventually become was quite interesting. Where I was actually amazed at how sub- subdued Teddy was. Like early on, until he starts getting like a, when he starts asking about scoring and stuff, but at the same time, Teddy has just like uh, has a l- lot of gravitas to him. Has actually a lot of weight to his character, where he actually gets that the uh, the big uh, like what am I moments when he has like a, that identity crisis, which is so far so much better than more than the nonsense with Morgana. In Persona, in Persona Five, by a, by a wide margin, when I when I really think about it, and speak of which, I did not care for Morgana in Persona Five either. Like I, um, music wise, uh, Persona Four Golden has a banger soundtrack. If there's one thing that you're gonna be, gar- be guaranteed with. Uh, Atlas games in general, and I'll go back to like uh, the first game I ever played by Atlas that I can remember playing was Thousand Arms way back in the PlayStation 1 era. And we go to like Catherine, Catherine Full Body, uh, Persona 3 Portable, uh, Persona 4 Arena, and Arena Ultimax, and, and uh, the, the, the dancing games, and 
it's like you're you're guaranteed to have a banger of a soundtrack. And granted, and, and we know Atlas is a subsidiary of Sega, and by and large, you're you always almost always going to have like a great soundtrack with any game that you know that's coming out from Sega. That that's that's not an opinion. That's almost a, a like a guaranteed fact. Uh, uh, so it's like uh, none of the tracks of started getting uh, felt old or repetitive. Uh, there was just a, there was a very nice flow to them. Uh, there was a, there was a nice variety of them, particularly when doing the slice of life day to day stuff that the tracks would change and so forth. Uh, with the exception, and obviously it's more for the theme and everything that when the um, and, and like uh, like in, from November into December, uh, where the fog totally rolls in. On, on um, on Enabum, as I literally j jumped the the thing there, because obviously I'm using footage from my own streams here, uh, and so forth. So we had to like jump it forward a bit, um, because I think I was referring to that shelf over there behind me with the uh, where I keep a lot of my, my PlayStation Two library. Um, so um. So what did we do and what did we not do uh, in this playthrough? Well, we did everything that was um, remotely possible in a single playthrough without like excessive farming and stuff. Uh, so we did fused every persona. We did every single social link. We did nearly every single side quest. I think I did, I did like, there's like 69, 70 side quests in the game. And I did like 66, 67 of them. Uh, some, uh, somewhere there is about. Um, I just got tired of like, okay, doing all the fishing and stuff. And I didn't want to jump back into. Uh, I didn't want to go back and in, in, in rerun um, Adachi's uh, a dungeon again. Uh, this is like, like, I know once that was enough. Um, so we did everything there. Uh, we read every single book. We did the crafted uh, lunches um, and a lot of the side objectives. The only things I did not do, there was there was four things I did not do on the on the single playthrough. Uh, one, I did not do the trivia content, the the, the trivia mode, uh, which is like I don't see why or how. What would be what's the entire point of that? Of it and it's like you ten gamer score not really worth it for me. Uh, did not do the re hardcore reset fan thing. Uh, if I go back to an earlier save and if I was really in interested in it, like try and go through and run certain areas again to try and farm each individual line that reset would say, but considering the random nature of it. Is like, yeah, no, I, I, I certainly hell was not going to do that. Um, and that, and, and that leaves us two things that also that we didn't do, but they're not possible in the first initial playthrough. Uh, one is to defeat Margaret that can only be done in a, in a new game plus run, which is funny because you can face Elizabeth in Persona 3 Portable and you can face uh, Caroline and Justine in Persona 5 Royale in your initial uh, uh, playthrough. So that's, ki so that's kind of a, a unique little aspect there. Uh, so, so we did, there was, there's 49 achievements in the game. I got 45 of them. So it was like pretty damn thorough. Would I play this game? Oh, the other achievement uh, was also fusing the um, the world persona. It's like it's a twelve ray uh, fusion or something of that where where you got to use like the uh, the top level ones uh, for each individual arcana to all fuse into one. So I did not do that. I I, I did not do that obviously because that requires a second playthrough. So. So the question becomes now, would I want to play Persona 4 Golden again? 
Well, having a save, meaning I have the new game, I, I will easily could just do a new game plus run. Um, so yeah, I would as like uh, try and defeat Margaret and obviously get that uh, extra fusion. Um, those are would be like the two objectives and. But that hardcore Rosette fan one is like, I I I generally hate things like that, particularly when there is no counter for it. Um, and, and that and since I was playing the Xbox version of that, and folks would know. Um, there was, something I ended up doing was the hundred skill card one achievement, and I would be going back into the velvet room looking to check the uh, the skill cards and literally counting like how many I needed, like how many. It's, it's like, and I really and I really wish uh, the achievement trackers uh, on the Xbox side was actually tracking to indicate like how much like how far along you were on that, which would have made certain things so much more easier in my opinion. But, you know, but at the same time, I was, since I was going back through individual, through the individual dungeons and I was aware of that achievement, I kept making sure to always try to get the skill cards off of any, any and all shuffle times. So it was like, there was, that was kind of the, the uh, trade off there. Uh, so was, there is that. Um, I did also have one particular issue with this game, which is kind of odd, uh, where the game would actually, if I did too many free fusions in a row, the game would, act, would randomly crash at times. So I always had to make sure it was like when, whenever I was going on a fusion bin, I was popping out to, um, to save every so often just to make sure I didn't. Uh, lose out uh, on any fusion progress that was made since there was no auto save with uh, Persona 4 Golden. Uh, uh, we, I know there is like the quick save and suspended save for like when you're in the dungeons and stuff, but by and large, there was there was nothing like that in terms of like an auto save file uh, f uh, for this particular game. Uh, I'm not saying that was a that was a drawback, but it's you know it's you know it's something I became glaringly aware of at times. Uh, now again, a future playthrough of it would be a lot quicker because I got the Mr. Perfect achievement, and so that means don't have to do any of the any of the studying or anything of that. Have the few have the like and knowing all like all the weapons and gear and stuff carry over into the second playthrough. It's like okay, I can just. Uh, knock out like so many individual things like in in a far less amount of time than than be uh than before i was like i think my playthrough was something like uh 90 hours give or take probably a little less than that it was definitely it was definitely well over uh, it was like uh shoot i should i Probably a second playthrough would take about 45 hours, like when you just cut out, like doing everything. Um, but of course, a second playthrough with me was like, okay, all the little interactions that that you kind of do not get to see um, when you, because you're focusing on the studying and raising all those like um, uh, personality stats. Um, so that would, so it's like, like the get the, the big give and take there um but yeah i would uh kind of like the same thing with persona 3 portable last year i wouldn't want to go back and play that again because of the uh um of the uh femc uh route and see that side of the story so which potentially should be quicker in some regards too i i, I believe but i'm but i'm not i'm not 100 percent sure on that either um, so with that said, I'll wrap this up here. So yeah, those are my thoughts, opinions, and overall here on, uh, Persona 4, uh, Golden. So with that said, you know, the drill tight, like comment, subscribe if you're so inclined, but more importantly, tighten your friendship bracelet, stay safe, have a good night. Uh, we are in the doll in like, it's, it, we're in a hot summer folks. Stay hydrated, please. Uh, I am someone who. Uh, 
who knows what it's like to have like a heat uh suffer from like heat stroke and things of that night and get, and where the like please make sure you stay hydrated stay safe in, in in this heat in this uh unbearable summer that we are clearly going to be having here in 2024 so again stay hydrated stay safe stay cool and we'll see y'all next time <laughs>